Greetings, boys, girls, and none of the above buddies. My name is Axel42, though depending on how you know about my existence, you might know me as Fake Rizzy. If you see this, then chances are that Arms 2 wasn't announced at the Direct. But, you, but you're probably wondering what this has to do with a fanfic about an underrated splat tuber I watched religiously. To make a long story short, this fanfic was originally meant for Rizzy to read during a Halloween stream back in 2022. But after several delays and my ADHD kicking in, and at moments that were inconvenient, I was able to release it on January 22nd of 2023, when Rizzy's channel turned two years old. Due to the overabundant and amount of swearing and intentionally bad grammar, I realized that Rizzy was more than likely never going to read it. Okay, he might have read it, but I doubt that he's going to read it on stream. But I forgot to mention this part in my notes. So I went onto Twitter and said if Arms 2 wasn't announced, that I would read the fic myself. If you see this and if you see both this message is tied to the Wattpad fanfic and the video and this video that I'm currently recording on one take, in case you couldn't tell then chances are that either A, ARMS 2 wasn't announced, or B, it was announced, but because I recorded this before the Direct, I still posted it after the Direct, because otherwise then I would have wasted my time for nothing. So if Rizzy, Connor, also known as Popdart TV, or Joey Perleone sees this, now you know why Rizzy's sad excuse of a faker is reading the worst fanfic they have written as of February 7th of 2023 when this is being recorded. The quality on the video also sucks because I don't have a mic and I did this in one take in an effort for it to match the style of the actual fic. Signed, Fake Rizzy, aka your narrator. P.S. I threw myself insert insert OC into this fic because my immortal did it and it was funny. Don't mind that. Alright, let's get into the meat of this fic. And just... No, I'm just gonna try and stretch out the intro to be three minutes long at the very least, because I don't want to risk the possibility of the YouTube bots getting mad. So, author's note. Thanks to my few brain cells for helping me with this. Also, a frick ton of swearing are in this bit of a fic. You know what, screw it. Now I realize why Rizzy will probably never read this on stream. I'm just gonna try and censor the swears as best as I can. While also throwing in a fair amount of commentary. Connor busted down Rizzy's door holding a box of Uno cards. Rizzy told Connor to bring some Pokemon cards, but we all know how dumb Connor is. For reference, this was written in 2022. To say Rizzy was pissed off was the biggest understatement of the year 2022. Connor, why the hell would you do this, you fa- Rizzy was about to continue that thought, but Connor, author's note, who being the Fortnite-obsessed child he is, threw the cards at Rizzy before dabbing. Don't mind me as I casually take sips of water during this. Without hesitation, Rizzy grabbed Connor by the throat by the throat and threw him into the car through the window. Buckle up, Connor! We're going on a road trip to hell. Also, don't mind the fact that I'm butchering these guys. <laughs> these are like actual characters. And just like that, Rizzy backed out of his driveway as the sounds of copyright music played in the car. But because I, author's note, the writer of this fanfic, am merciful, I'll let Rizzy choose a copyright-free song so he can keep his ad revenue. Only ten seconds into their driving, they stopped. When they got out, they just went to Joey's house and grabbed him by hit hood while you know, dragging him into the car. And here we get into the terrible grammar and the fact that I did not proofread this in the slightest. Why are you guys like this? Joey asked, losing any hex he had left to give. 
Ah, uh, there's no would have been another word, but you know the YT algorithm. I was supposed to replace the F word with hex, with the word heck originally, but I forgot to do that because I was in a rush. He is after us. The other two spoke in a hyper-realistic tone. The urge to make a Mario Party DS anti-piracy screen joke here is too much, but Rizzy doesn't want to lose his friend, so he won't. Who is he? We're not that far in the story yet, now shut up. After their quick banter so I can make the story quick, which is a lie because this fanfic's actually 14 minutes long and is going to be longer thanks to my commentary. Rizzy threw Connor into the trunk of the car. His justification was that he, he was the secret weapon. Meanwhile, we all know it's because Connor would cause Rizzy to crash. They drove back to Rizzy's place where only he exited the car and went inside the house. After 420 plus hours of Connor being trapped inside of a hot car while Joey practiced his already perfect Friday Night Funkin' skills, Rizzy turned to returned to the car with a suitcase and three backpacks. Inside the suitcase was 30 bottles of Pog juice and a book filled with the entire lore of Luxury Station. To those of you who have not been looking into Joey Perleone's stuff outside the Mario Party DS anti-piracy series, just put Luxury Station into YouTube and you'll learn more, okay? There was also a box with, with a lock and the words, For the Finale, written in wiper-fluid blue colored Sharpie. What was in the box, Connor did not want to know. It was probably going to kill him, let's be real here. But enough world building. I got a cursed fanfic to write. Driving through the city, driving through the city, driving through the city. Yeah, I think you get the idea of what the heck they're doing. But it had to be put on pause for a while. Be Somewhere on the highway, one of the wheels of our hero's vehicle had gone flat. To make matters worse, Rizzy forgot to stop at a gas station before this adventure began. To say this was by far one of the biggest mistakes you can make downgrades anything else you may have said in the past. With the small detail of the crew being stuck in the highway, Connor was voted to be sent out of the trunk to see the damages. But just before Connor could get run could get hit by one of the passing cars, a strange reddish purple void appeared in front of the car. Rizzy, what is that thing in front of the car? Connor shouted from behind the vehicle. I don't know, but whatever this thing is, it's definitely something I didn't learn about when getting my driver's license, Rizzy replied in some form of biting sarcasm. In less than a second of Rizzy dropping what could be the only actual joke in this fanfic, the void had, had started to pull them into an unknown dimension. Connor tried to scream at it so it would stop, but he was almost immediately told to shut up. With what it was our, our hero's only way of getting out of that situation now gone, they were chucked into a whole new world. Once their car hit the ground, they all well, had blacked out. Walking up, if, wait no, I mean frick, in case you can't tell, I'm in a rush to get this done because I gotta go to bed in an hour. Waking up, they found themselves in a desert that looked like something out of an apocalypse. The only things in sight were sand, cacti, and the road up ahead. Deciding that they would had exit the car and search for help, Rizzy adjusted the rearview mirror of, of his car for some reason. Looking into it nearly made him scream expletives at the top of his lungs. Looking as reflection showed that somehow he turned into a Splatoon character. Specifically the one from Splatoon 2, because that one's the most iconic. Blue hair and all. Looking over at Connor and Joey, he showed that they too had changed. Connor had turned into a Fortnite skin. And Joey was just wearing his Uncle Quizno costume from the Luxury Station series. Which somehow made him look the most normal in this hellscape. With everyone now looking like rejects from, with everyone now looking like rejects from the depths of heck, they had no clue what they were gonna do. 
but looking up ahead to a gas station gave them some ideas. After an hour or so of our heroes pushing their car to the gas station, they had made it to one of the gas pumps. Only God knows how much money they're going to waste on the stupid as all hell gas prices. Connor was in charge of filling the car with gas while Rizzy and Joey went into the gas into the station itself. Also, I forgot to mention in this, but the gas station they were at was Quick Trip. Authors note, no, this fanfic isn't sponsored. And neither is this video. While they were buying a heck ton of gummy worms and coke, authors note the drug, Connor was chugging shots of gasoline. <laughs> Sorry. It's just, now that I'm actually reading this fic, I just realized how freaking stupid this is. Connor was chugging shots of gasoline before a loud BANG could be heard from a gas tank. Worried that he had actually blown something up, he looked over to where the sound was and saw a huge as heck bear with her with, with cat ears. It roared before leaping after Connor. But suddenly, an octoling with a fresh pompadour her jumped out from the debris from the debris and splat the bear with their bare hands. As the bear bled out, it said its final words. Author's note, what's a good fanfic without a self-insert? Also known as me. Son of a bitch. It said in a Scott the Waz impression while bleeding a strange purple and pink liquid. Since Connor had no idea who the squid this person is, he just screeched, Who are you? at the octoling. I'm the one who knocks, they said in a voice of an old man despite looking like they were a child. Whatever the case was, they seemed low-key trustworthy. God damn, my throat is- God damn, my throat is damn- is too damn dry. They almost immediately started walking away before Connor asked them something again. When collab? The octoling stopped before her shrugging their shoulders and saying, Sure. Ten minutes later, Rizzy and Joey a freaking run out of the quick trip with a box of stuff. Get in the van, guys! Rizzy screeches while throwing the box at Connor. Everyone immediately got in the van while buckling their seatbelts because Dora the Explorer said that it was safe. Once everyone was in the car and Rizzy starts speeding away from the police that showed up out of nowhere, Rizzy realized that someone else had ended up in the car. He ignored it because they didn't seem like a cop, so they must be good. Oh, how hecking wrong he was. The car eventually ran out of gas. They were at gas station earlier, so that means Connor didn't fill the freaking car with gas. I mean, the gas prices were shit, but still, what the hell, Connor? I just read ahead and I nearly spit out my water. You know what that means? Time to copy and paste the entire car. I've come to make an announcement. Skip from the Sonic Adventure 2 fan dub. Rizzy picked up a megaphone from off the ground and started to screech. Wait, give me a moment. I need to prepare my vocals. I've come to make an announcement! Crotterism! Joey put his hand over the megaphone. If you continue, you will end up like that bitch I fired. In case you couldn't tell, they're acting incredibly out of character. <laughs> Once Rizzy was stopped from killing his vocal cords, and deciding to read the entirety of My Immortal for an hour, if you don't know what that fanfic is, Google it, otherwise you are a prep. <laughs> the gang was now stuck walking. While walking, they had eventually tripped and no-clipped into the back rooms. In case you couldn't tell, I have not read this fanfic in a damn while. 
And by a damn while, I mean like a week or so. I'm only now realizing just how stupid this is. And I know I said that earlier, but I just want to reemphasize. This is probably the worst thing I've ever written. The walls and floors were covered in the ugliest shade of yellow that you could see. While an, while an annoying AF buzzing played. In front of our villains was a piece of paper with chicken scratch all over it. No, seriously, it was just a chicken scratching itself in pain. After the strange octoling bit the damn thing, the paper showed coordinates to an RV. I am the one who knocks, the octoling said with great haste. I am the one who knocks! I am the one who knocks! They said while pointing at Rizzy and the crew to follow them. As the crew Naruto runs through the back rooms, they found a box full of tapes next to a shitty looking TV. They stopped and went over to the tapes. When Connor tried to pick one up, it grew legs and ran away. Why did I write this? Connor, what kind of disease did you give that piece of expletive? Joey said in mock fear. That's when they heard it! A stick figure made of bungee cords and the blood of the innocent and sir. Before sprinting hang at them like it was a D U D running for the food at a golden <laughs> corral buffet. I kind of want authors know. I kind of want IHOP for some reason. What was past me thinking when writing this? Knowing how horror movies work, they ran, like, like, into it like every white person in a horror movie. Others know it. How the hell do you spell horror? But somehow they lived. The octoling then threw the box at its ugly AF face while screaming, I am the one who knocks! The stick figure was knocked back, which gave them the time to Naruto run to the RV. Once the octoling bit Rizzy in the hand to get control of the RV, it started hacking, flooring it. They even ran over the stick figure and killed it in the process. Once they were out of there, they, they were back home again. But something didn't feel right. And by something, I mean the fact that everything was flooded by dark green water and salmonids. It was the damn big run. Rizzy eventually said, This reminds me of the time I had to convince Joey that Pepe Sylvia exists. Cut away gag. <laughs> Rizzy barged into the office building at a fast rate carrying a bottle of yellow bike juice screaming and while on the verge of a panic attack. Time to sacrifice my vocal cords. Deuteronomy, dude. Those guys are sharp as nails up there. You can't put anything past them. Oh my god, I am freaking out. I am so stressed out. I feel like I'm having a panic attack. He was about to finish his sentence to panic attack, but Joey cut him off while standing in front of a board with a conspiracy theory on it. You want to talk about stress? You want to talk about stress? Okay? I stumbled onto a major company conspiracy, Rizzy. How about that for stress? The hell are you talking about? This company is being led like a stuck pig, Rizzy. And I got the paper trail to prove it. And Joey backed away before her turning to the conspiracy board. Take a look at this! Jesus Christ, Joey. That right there is the mail. Points to some mail. Now let's talk about the mail. Can we talk about the mail, please, Rizzy? I've been dying to talk about the mail with you all day, okay? Pepe Sylvia, this name keeps popping up over and over again. Every day, Pepe's mail is getting sent back to me. Pepe Sylvia, Pepe Sylvia, I look at the mail. This whole box is Pepe Sylvia! So I say to myself, I gotta find this guy. I gotta go up to his office. I gotta put the mail in the guy's goddamn hands. Otherwise, he's never gonna get it. It's gonna keep coming back down here. So I go up to Pepe's office, and what do I find out, Rizzy? What do I find out? 
there is no Pepe Sylvia. The man does not exist. So, okay, so I'm like, ah, shit, buddy, I gotta dig a little deeper. There's no Pepe Sylvia. You gotta be kidding me. I got boxes full of Pepe. Okay, so I start marching my way down to Carol and HR, and I knock on her door and I say, Carol, Carol, I gotta talk to you about Pepe. And when I open that door, there's not a single goddamn desk in that office. There is no Carol in HR. Rizzy, half the employees on this building have been made up. This office is a goddamn ghost town. Once Joey was done ranting like a madman, and I was done, others know it, and he is, and I just got done destroying my vocal cords, like, goddamn. Rizzy started to speak while having a WTF look. Alright, Joey, I'm gonna stop you right there. Not only do all of these people exist, but they have been asking for their mail on a daily basis. It's all they're talking about up there. Her Jesus Christ, dude, we are going to lose our jobs. Well, calm down, because here's one thing that's not going to happen. What? We're not going to get fired. We're not? Because we've already been fired. We lost our jobs! Yep, that's right. About three days ago, a couple pink slips came in. One for you, one for me. So what did I do? I mailed them halfway to Siberia, okay? We lost our job. That means we lost our health insurance, which means all of this was for nothing. God damn it, dude. I'm actually having a panic attack. I'm actually having a panic attack. But will you get yourself another coffee? Sips coffee. I am, bro. All right, well, fine. Barney, give this guy a cigarette. He's clearly freaking out, man. Huh? Who? Barney, he's the guy who tipped me off to Peppa Sylvia. Barney? Who the hell is Barney? You don't see Bar- Oh, shit. Where'd he go? You've lost your mind. You've lost your goddamn mind, Joey! Cut away, gaggy over. Joey eventually said, But do you remember when, in Happy Day, when you killed me after putting my soul in the Nintendo DS? Cut away, slap. No, I am sick of this shit! Connor screams in pain. That's when they realized something. It was in front of them. A big ass mother hacking salmon! It was in front of them! And with every boss salmon backing their bitch ass up, our dumbass heroes better freaking fight if they want to live. Connor whipped and nanade and dabbed before throwing a DMR from Fortnite at the big bitch in front of them. As you can guess, it was the shittiest idea Connor ever had. It did absolutely nothing. You know, Connor, there are a bajillion words in the English language alone, and none of them describe hey, how much I want to send you to the Shadow Realm right now. I am the one who knocks! <laughs> they ran for their lives until they were at a run-down gas station with a bunch of their old fam friends and family. They all whipped out guns and started a shootout with the salmon and mafioso fam. Blood and ink was flying everywhere, everywhere like it was Vietnam all over again. But then someone screamed, Everyone shut the heck up! Everyone turned around and saw the Octoling from before was holding an N64 controller. Best console I ever played. They pressed the, the A button and all the Samets turned into Inktolings and started to form a gay line. The walls of the building collapsed as they all ex exploded simultaneously. Ruzi screamed in horror as he saw the cluster heck of a splat an OC in front of him. Why? He yelled. I'm gonna kill you. Stoner the pet rock deploy. The octoling shadow while throwing a bluish gray stone with googly eyes at Rizzy's skull. Hey, I have that thing in real life. In fact, that's my profile picture on several social medias. 
It shattered on impact, but it didn't kill him. It then put and pulled out and put on a pair of shades and cracked out a gun before doing some Matrix stunts on everyone in the room minus Connor. He dodged the bullets as everything went in a slow motion. Carnage was absolutely everywhere. Joey's unconscious body was even displayed in a Nintendo DS. Soon, everything went back to the same pace it was in before. Rock stars arise from the ground and start to form the tentacle rocks from the final boss in the first Splatoon. They said that I was in danger. Fools, I am the danger, they screamed in rage. A guy gets spawn camped and you think that of me? No! I am the one who splats! Yeah! <laughs> I regret saying that last part. <laughs> Stoner, Stoner started to shoot at Connor while the octoling jumped into the air and started charging a massive booyah bomb. No one was booyahing, but it was only a matter of time before the Rizzyverse collapses. Connor, now losing any hope he had left, ran from him the murderous rock and hid under a table, bracing for impact. But that's when he felt it. A sense of hope. The feeling that he couldn't, they just couldn't die. He felt everyone's hearts beating at once. The hearts of his friends, the hearts of his enemies, they all had one goal. To take back this godforsaken land. He looked up as the familiar tune to the Calamari Contagion started to play and a truck drove in. It was the Squid Sisters! With hopes and dreams backing him up in the most cliche way ever, Connor had only one chance to save the, bro the world. But how was he going to do it alone? I'm not letting you take all the credit saving the world, am I? Rizzy had gotten up. The injury at his skull had miraculously healed. That melody really does save lives. Turning around, he also saw Joey being teleported out of the DS to cheer him on. Rizzy handed Connor the locked box from the beginning with a key. You gotta use the contents to save the world. Opening the box revealed a bottle of green bog juice? Wait, is that bog juice exotic jungle? There was no time to talk. Only time to save the timeline, and, and many more like it. Connor ran forward and yeeted the bottle at the Octoling. As he did so, time had stopped, and everything exploded. And it was awesome. Rizzy then woke up on his bed into the sounds of Family Guy ear rape. That was one hell of a hecked up dream. He really needs to stop taking that product his science teacher has been making before bed. Whatever, he didn't care because he's in college and is now on his second year of YouTube. The end, or fin for our non-English readers. If you made it this far, I am sorry. Axel42 also knows fake Rizzy. P.S. I'm not actually sorry. And so that was probably by far the worst thing I have written. And if you've made it to the end of the video, I can't be held liable for the fact that I have wasted almost half an hour of your time. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go, because I have to go to bed in an hour or so. So, I'll see you guys uh, whenever I decide to- if I ever decide to post this. Axel42 is signing out.